how our lives progress, how within our nature we seek perfection. We are constantly seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mentioned this yesterday that Allah says, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِي يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ O human being, you are constantly striving towards your Lord and you will meet Him. Even now, you think that your goal in life is to complete university, your goal in life is to marry so and so, your goal in life is to buy a Ferrari. But in reality, what you are seeking is Allah. You have just misplaced Allah and for now you think Ferrari is Allah. But you will discover in time it is not. Let us suppose when I am young, my goal and ambition is to be, I don't know, a teacher. Now, I come into an environment where there is room for growth and promotion and I have the smartness, the aptitude, the ability to progress. My nature, because it seeks perfection, after a while, I will want to take an, a higher position and become, let's say, the head of department. Will I stop at any point and say, that's it for me, I'm done? No. If I have aptitude and an opportunity comes up, I'll say, I want to be the principal. Then I'll say, I want to join the board of education. Then I'll say, I want to be the minister of education. Then I'll say, I want to be the prime minister. There is a constant progress. Now here, you take any career and you will see that sort of a desire within a human being. There are two things to observe. Firstly, we always seek something that in our eyes is higher and more perfect. We never seek something backwards. The Minister of Education will never feel that for me the next goal in life is to go and become a teacher, for example. Not to say that being a teacher is anything meaner or baser, but for him, in his eyes, that is a move backwards. Okay? Just like if you are a teacher or if you have crossed university, you will never aspire to going back to high school because that is a step backwards. So the first thing we observe in human beings is that we constantly want something higher and better. But the other thing we observe is that as we grow older, we go through this retress when I'm in my 20s and my 30s, I'm constantly striving at work in the corporate world, trying to move ahead, get ahead of others. Then when I cross 40, 50 and my energy starts waning and I start growing old and I start seeing the gray hair and I start falling sick every now and then, I lose the energy, I lose the zeal. I start seeing there are a lot of other younger individuals who are striving for the same position as me, I cannot keep up, so I slowly start giving up. Now because all my life my ambition and my goal was only limited to this, I start now feeling disappointed, I start feeling depressed, I start looking for pleasure elsewhere, I start developing attachments, I start forming addictions. This is the reason why so many individuals in all societies, when they retire from work, they go through a phase of depression because they suddenly come from a position where they had authority, they had status, people reported to them. When they went in the morning, people asked them what to do next. They had control, they had their own office. Now they're home, nobody's asking them anything. Because their goal and their aim and their desire in life was only this. Again, remember, there's nothing wrong with desire, there's something wrong with obsession. If I had a desire for progression in my career, but my obsession was Allah, then even when I retire, even when I am fired from my work or there is a downsizing and I lose my job, it does not drive me to despair. I do not give up on life, I do not seek an addiction because I am already in love and obsessed with something that is far greater. So rather than chasing and running after something that will disappoint us, what we can do as Muslims and particularly as the Shia of Ali Muhammad is acknowledge right from the beginning that my fitrah seeks Allah and my goal should be Allah and the perfection I seek should be through proximity to Him. Everything else is temporary. I can have a desire for education, I can have a desire for career, I can have desire for family, that is all fine. But my passion, what really drives me, we said yesterday, all human beings move all the time. 
but our movements are driven by our intention and our desire. If that intention and desire is driven through fitra, through my divine nature, not through my animal instinct that only wants pleasure, fleeing from pain and survival, then we said there is nur, there is light in everything I do. Then I can do everything else that other human beings do. But my life is filled with joy, there is happiness, there is tranquility, there is no that simmering unhappiness. I don't need some addiction to keep me happy every day. I don't have to get up in the morning and say, I have to have my cup of coffee, otherwise I can't function. I no longer become a human being who says, if I don't have my pillow, I cannot sleep. I no longer become a human being who says, I must have my cell phone with me all the time. If I don't have my cell phone, I get withdrawal symptoms. Because I am complete. There is nothing else I need to complete me. The fact that I don't need this coffee and this particular pillow and this cell phone and this internet is not because I have given up on life or I am depressed. It is because I am in love, but with something greater. I can still have that cell phone, I can still have that pillow, I can still have all that. But if I lose it, it doesn't bother me. Okay, this is very, very important. And it is for this reason that, what is the opposite to that? The opposite of that is, if I don't acknowledge that Allah can only be my true love, then another thing we will observe in our personal experience in life is that I will constantly jump from one desire to another desire, from one addiction to another addiction, from one attachment to another attachment, from one hobby to another hobby. And by doing so, I am simply replacing one God with another God, another God with another God. But what I am actually seeking is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah points to this fact that if you do not surrender and become my slave, you will be enslaved by much else. When you enslave yourself to Allah, He sets you free. When you enslave yourself to other than Allah, it shackles you, it imprisons you. In Surah Al-Jathiyah, chapter 45 of the Qur'an, verse 23, Allah says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Have you then seen him whose God is his lust? Have you considered the man whose God is his lust? أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Which means, ilah, the, the Arabic word Allah comes from ilah. Ilah is that which you adore. And therefore, my Allah might be the one to whom I pray and I do ruku and sujood, but my ilah might be something else. My ilah is that dream, that passion, that reason that gives me the desire to wake up in the morning. Maybe my ilah is a hammer. That's what makes me wake up in the morning. That's what I want. When I'm driving on the road, every time a hammer passes by, I'm looking. Others don't notice it, but I notice it because it's my beloved. You see, your ilah has to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salam, wanted to show this to his people. His people used to worship the stars and the moon and the sun. And he wanted to show them that human nature wants perfection, wants the best. And unless one comes to this realization that there is nothing but Allah that is perfect, we go through these hoops where we constantly seek one and then skip and skip and skip. Which is again not entirely out of purpose. As we have said, it is this conflict and this disappointment and these struggles that help us come out of that cocoon, help us come out of our shell and realize our true potential. And this is in Surah Al-An'am, which is chapter 6 of the Qur'an, verses 76 and 79. So what Ibrahim salam, did was, he pretended to be one of them, a worshipper of stars and the moon and the sun. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ رَأَى كَوْكَبًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي When night fell and he saw a beautiful star, he said to his people, this is my Lord, هَذَا رَبِّي when that star disappeared and set, he said to them, I don't like things that set. This cannot be God. Then he saw the full moon. He saw the moon coming out, rising. He said to his people, this is beautiful. This is my God. I'm going to worship this one. 
قال لئن لم يهدني ربي لاكونن من القوم الظالمين when the moon set when it began to wane and become a crescent and disappear he said indeed if my lord had not guided me i would have been one of those who are misguided فلما راى الشمس بازغه قال هذا اكبر هذا ربي then he saw the sun rising he said this is the big one this is my lord i am going to worship the sun hada akbar falamma afalat then when the sun set qala ya qaumi inni bari'un mimma tushrikun when the sun set he said oh my people i now disassociate myself completely from what you worship inni tawajjahtu wajhi lilladhi fatara as-samawati wal ardi hanifan wa ma ana min al-mushrikin I now set my face and I direct myself my movement my intention my desire completely only to the originator of the heavens and the earth and I this is my pure path I am Hanif and I shall not be one of the polytheists So he gave them by example how you can take something to be your god and then it will disappoint you then you will look for something brighter and bigger then it will disappoint you then you will look for something even brighter and bigger then it will disappoint you and you will keep going through that in life until you come to this conclusion this ma ana min al mushrikeen i am not one of the polytheists is not just in the sense of i am not one of those who worships idols it is also in the sense that i am not attached to anything in my love that will compete with my love for allah that is why shirk is of different kinds there is shirk al khafi how can i truly say to allah that i love you when i know that in my heart i love something else or someone else more than i love him that is why we have in hadith al qudsi that when a man says i love you o oh allah and then he sleeps through the whole night and does not wake up for salatul lail or namaz shab as we call it then allah says to the angels he is a liar how can a person who claims i am his beloved sleep have you known a man in love to sleep in your own experience when you are engaged could you sleep at night when you are in love you cannot eat you lose your appetite you lose your sleep allah says you claim to love me but you sleep like a drunk all night where is this love that you claim about it is false so we have to look at this in our lives and look at your own life from the time you were a child you remember when you were a child there was this toy you wanted and you thought if i have this i will never want anything else dad just buy me this bicycle i will never ask you anything again just this once but after you got that bicycle after a while you wanted a motorbike didn't you then you wanted a car right you wanted this watch if i get this watch i just want this xbox i will never ask you for anything then when a new version comes out you yourself you have this iphone you have to have this now the new one comes out the old one loses its charm it no longer has value your dream is to graduate from high school once you graduate it no longer has any appeal now you want to graduate from university so it is your nature to want something bigger something higher why go through all the hoops why not just jump and say my obsession shall be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything else shall be a means towards that in other words our desire for greatness can be part of our fitra but it is misplaced when tabia interferes and that desire and that obsession is not rooted in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we don't know our fitra and we don't realize that the real goal is allah then what happens is we jump horizontally from one god to another instead of jumping vertically you see fitra wants qualitative progression tabia doesn't care about quality tabia wants quantitative movement it wants a horizontal move look at your own lives look at our own lives i ask you i ask myself how many times have you thought about taking different courses that you never took how many times have you thought of taking different hobbies that you then gave up how many times have you thought of different professions and businesses and googled and searched it to death and then didn't do anything about it
How many times have you thought of migrating to different lands and you searched and searched and searched and then you still didn't do about it? And how many times do you still continue to do that? Why? Because you are searching for something. You are looking for happiness. But you will not find it anywhere else except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.